today's webinar. Uh, we have an interesting topic lined up for you. Uh, personal branding, winning ways for 2023 and beyond as we uh, work on our new year resolutions and plans for 2023. Uh, we'll have the opening remarks by Dr. Murid Indegwa and also the introduction of the speaker. Uh, Dr. Murid Indegwa is the uh, EDN CEO at Kim. Then after that session, we will have the keynote address uh, by Ms. Antoinette Bonita Kamau, who is the Chief Executive Officer and Lead Communications Consultant at Comken Africa Limited. And then uh, after the discourse by, by the speaker, we will have uh, the Q&A session. Uh, members, as is the norm, kindly type in uh, your questions into the chat box. And then I will field those questions during the question and answer session to the moderator who will give us uh, the responses. Uh, after the question and answer session, we will have the closing remarks uh, by Dr. Murid Ndegwa. At this point, uh, I will invite uh, Dr. Murid Ndegwa to give us his opening remarks. Karibu, Idi. You're on mute, Idi. Sorry, my sincere apologies. Good afternoon, members, and uh, thank you very much for joining us for, for today's seminar uh, webinar. And as uh, Brian has said, we have a very interesting topic lined up for all of us. And uh, the discourse we expect to have is uh, quite interesting in the sense that uh, the topic we are looking at is a very, very interesting topic. So um, let me just give a brief from our perspective in terms of um, this aspect of personal branding, winning ways for 2023 and beyond. In our view, we feel that it takes great teams to succeed in branding a company. And the consistency required in quality as well as visibility for a company, organization, product, or service to be successfully established as a brand, we also feel is not easy. And with that in mind, it is even more complicated for personal branding. And I'm sure the speaker is going to give us uh, uh, details in regard to that. For, is, for instance, it is easy to impose a logo. As you know, many companies have logos and even certain colors, what they call house colors. And it's easy for us to say that this logo belongs to this company. For example, when you see the, the slash, you know straight away that that is Nike. Um, but when it is a person, one may wonder how to place all these elements of branding and even how to shape them such that they reflect you as a person. It's perceived difficulty aside, personal branding is important now more than ever before. And especially in this era of the gig economy, which is forcing us to create and maintain a personal brand. Because sometimes you're even working remotely, you're not working. Uh, you, you also want to create your own content and you want people to associate with you as a brand. The other uh, dilemma in this area, or in this era, is that of association. In our view, our association with certain organizations or products is what basically gets us out there to begin with. We are therefore caught in a situation of embracing our association, our association with that other brand in order to stay relevant or sometimes dissociating to avoid being overshadowed. Again, also in our view, a personal brand also requires a great sense of uniqueness. For example, having a trait, some skills, or even some form of expertise that only you can be, uh, can be sought for. As, a, as an example, we may ask ourselves, what comes to mind when you hear the name Churchill? Or even Usain Bolt, or even Kipchoge Keino? or the late Nelson Mandela, or the late Professor Angari Madai, just to mention a, um, a name. Now, the platforms on which we are present in building our brands often matter, in our view. For instance, it is, it is almost impossible to build a brand in this era if you're not on social media. I've heard of cases where some people say that, you know what, I cannot be on social media because of X, Y, Z. But I think the key thing now is that we feel it is important for one to be on one media platform or another. These and many more questions we believe uh, we already have or will continue to have about personal branding will, will be well answered today by our speaker, who is a seasoned communication specialist, and this is none other than Mrs. Antoinette Bonita Kamau. She is the CEO and lead communications consultant at Comken Africa Limited. Now, just before I, we invite the speaker, allow me just to mention a few things also. Firstly, we also believe that um, in Robert Kiyosaki's uh, famous New York best-selling author's words, he said, and I quote in his words, 
If you're not a brand, you, uh, you are a commodity. Again, I repeat, and I quote, if you're not a brand, you are a commodity. And I believe nobody wants to be a commodity that another person organization sells. We need to get to being brands ourselves. So let us learn all there is to learn. Briefly, just highlights of Kim activities. This is a new year, and uh, we request you to kindly renew your membership. Renew is ongoing. You stand to benefit a range of a range of benefits, and you can do so through PayPal number eight nine six six double zero, or alternatively, you can send an email to membership at kim.ac.ke, or you can reach our membership officer Jeremiah Wanga on 0703-840-345. Details will be posted on the chat uh, for purposes of either renewal or even seeking more information. We also have our KIMSOM, that's Kenya Institute of Management, uh, School of Management programs, where we have diploma and certification pro uh, programs, which are, which are being offered all, all, all over in our branches countrywide. And I also, oh, we also have some good news. On 20th of December, we signed an MOU between KIM and Management University of Africa, which is sponsored by KIM. And this enables a seamless flow of students from KIM once they do their diploma programs to proceed to Management University of Africa and do their degree programs. And the reason for this is that it provides a very good platform for the students who come to KIM to then transit to MUA and get their degrees. There's even a benefit in terms of discount. There's also a benefit in terms of um, um, courses or, or, or programs that uh, you'll be exempted from, please reach out to all our branch, branches or, or alternatively post the question on the chat and we'll endeavor to answer. The other alternative is to reach out to our website and you'll get all these details. Currently we have the intake going on. So this is the opportune time, especially those who may have students who are, who are transiting from form, uh, fourth form and they're looking for an opportunity to get into a university and maybe they have not been admitted to the public universities, this is a great opportunity specifically for those students who want to, uh, to uh, proceed and get degrees. Even for those students or for those persons who are already working like yourself and myself, this presents an opportunity because our diploma is quite enriched. For those who have companies, whether it's an, uh, it's an SME, or you, you work in, um, in a company that uh, is large enough, we are open also for the company of the year awards and SME of the year awards, and also manager and CEO of the year award. Now, all these details again are available from uh, Kim Manager Special project, Projects, and this is Jacqueline Opande, and you can reach to her on 0722-582-609, or you can uh, reach out to our website, and the details again will be posted on the chat. Uh, we have also sent out our training calendar for the year 2023, and it is rich in content in terms of contemporary areas for training and even areas that are futuristic in training. Again, the registration for training programs is ongoing, and you can reach out to our training and conferences manager, and this is Anna McCoven on 0773 359 or alternatively, you can email training at kim.ac.ke. Again, the details will be posted on the chat. We have some upcoming programs in training and conferences, for example, strategic planning using the balanced scorecard approach. And this will be conducted in Mombasa from January 23rd to 27th. We also have management skills for administrative professionals, again, in Mombasa from 30th of January to 3rd of February. And then emotional intelligence for supervisors and line managers, again, in Mombasa from 6th of February to 10th of February, 2023. For more information, please feel free to contact us on 0773-359-278, or alternatively send us an email on training at kim.ac.ke, or uh, chat with us on the chat box, or even visit our website, www.kim.ac.ke, or post the details on the chat, and we will endeavor to respond. Without further ado, allow me now to introduce our speaker, as I said, her name is Antonich, Mrs. Antonich Bonita Kamau. We'll post her bio on the screen and I'll ensure that I go through that so that we introduce the speaker who is a seasoned communications uh, uh, specialist. Right, Ms. Ant Mrs. Antonich Bonita Kamau is a seasoned communication specialist with exceptional skills in developing and implementing public relations programs, strategic communication strategies, 
crisis communication strategies and protocols and stakeholder engagement strategies. She is passionate about highlighting development concerns and promoting sustainable development within the global arena through storytelling. Interesting. She's also a trainer and an adjunct lecturer at Desta University, a transformative coach from Coach Masters Academy. And she's currently the chief executive officer and lead communication consultant at Comken Africa Limited, which is a PR and communications agency. She is also a member of the Public Relations Society of Kenya, the Africa Public Relations Association, and the Institute of Learning and Management, and also women on boards. Without further ado, allow me to invite our speaker. Usually, like we say, if all is well, give us a thumbs up. If there's a problem, give us the thumbs down or post the detail, details on the chat and we'll endeavor to respond. Uh, Ms. Antonit, and I hope I pronounce your name correctly. This is uh, the floor, the floor is there for you. Uh, please come on board and give us a discourse on the topic of the day, which is um, personal branding, winning ways for 2023 for and beyond. Thank you and let's give um, a round of applause as you usually, usually do just by doing like that. Karibu sana. Uh, thank you very much. I think it's Dr. Moridi for that uh, introduction. And thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to come this afternoon and share with you some nuggets on, and insights, a few insights on uh, personal branding. So let me just uh, turn off my camera and, and uh, share the screen, then I'll turn it on after I've shared my screen. Just give me a minute. Okay, so I will just go right ahead into my discussion this afternoon. So have you ever wondered why certain individuals maybe in your field or otherwise rise, just rise out of nowhere to national prominence or some form of visibility? These individuals tend to get all the media attention they tend to get to be invited to deliver keynotes at top conferences they get to be appointed to sit on various boards and even attract best uh, clients if, if they are consultants. And sometimes I just wonder, are these men and women smarter than the rest of us? Uh, or are they privy to some magical personal branding strategy that the rest of us uh, don't know? That's a question that I want you to ponder as we have this discussion. A few years back, a research was conducted to, uh, to learn everything about this industry as they referred them to them stars, uh, to, to look at their personal branding strategies and to figure out exactly what they did to develop and uh, make their personal brands, market their personal brands extremely well. And the findings of that research were publicized in a groundbreaking book called uh, The Visible Expert. And maybe you can you can uh, look 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 up the book and, and read more. So these uh, industry stars or visible experts, uh, they develop their personal branding strategies uh, in a very strategic way, systematically and slowly. And so whether you are an entrepreneur or a, a, a business person, a student, a philanthropist, a creative, whatever you are. A strong brand allows you to grow. A strong brand brand allows you to earn more. A strong brand also allows you allows you to say more. And so, all you need for you to develop a strong brand, like some of these industry stars we see, is just a few tips, uh, tricks here and there, and some social media marketing tools. That that is what you that that is what I want to talk about today in this uh, this afternoon. Just how how we can use some of these tips. 
to develop your personal branding. But before I do that, I just want to define uh, what is personal branding. So personal branding is basically that conscious uh, crafting of your own personal persons of a person's public identity or your identity. And this includes your image, this includes your story, and, and this also includes the, your, the particular position you are, you, you are in within a community or even the particular position you are in within your industry. It is personal branding is that combination of uh, an individual's visibility and even the reputation that you have amongst your amongst stakeholders, amongst your customers, and even amongst your peers. Personal branding is 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 also having that a program of activities that are designed to even elevate your personal visibility and improve also your reputation. And so as now you become better known and respected, then you grow in prominence, you grow in, in eminence, you grow in your visibility. And so why is personal branding then important? Personal branding is important because everyone has a personal brand. So that's why it's important. We all have a personal brand. And so your, your brand is, is, is your brand. Oops, sorry, my, let me just move. Let me just move my screen. Excuse me. Just give me a minute, I'm having. Okay, so why is personal branding important? Personal branding is important because everyone has a personal brand. Your brand is the way, is the way that others perceive you. And also your brand is, is also the expectations they form after they form as a result of having perceived you the way you present yourself. So, you, you, are, we are, you are constantly branding yourself. So you brand yourself each time, each time you dress up for, to work, you brand yourself each time you, uh, you go for a party, you brand yourself each time you write a proposal, you brand yourself even when, when you send out your CV or when you post something on social media. And so, and sometimes when we're doing these activities, when you're dressing to work, when you're writing, when you're writing, uh, you're sending out your CV, you're writing a proposal, sometimes this may not be done, be done perfectly. No, but for you to continuously build your brand, you can rework, you can continuously rework this so that you can appear better every single time that you, you are sending, you are presenting yourself, whether whether it's verbal or in written form to, to the audience. And so, so with personal branding, it becomes important because you are shaping your persona for people outside your inner circles. And as you shape that persona, you are fostering a particular audience so that you're able to achieve a, to achieve a particular impact. So depending on what uh, a person wants to accomplish, people tend to create different brands for different arenas. But at the end of the day, all of us develop, all, all of us benefit from developing a very strong uh, brand. And so just to summarize the, the definition of what I mean by personal branding is, is basically how you see yourself and also how others uh, see you. And then I just wanted to make a, a distinction. Sorry, I want to make, let me just, my slide, I'm not seeing my slide properly, yes. I want to make a distinction between, between a personal branding and uh, a very quick distinction between business branding and personal branding. So business branding, as you may, as, as Dr. Moravi, uh, I think alluded to earlier on in his reopening remarks, is what you know as corporate branding, is all about branding the business, is all about the brand, the company. So for example, if I talk about my agency or my jewelry business, they are businesses with, with, with their own brands. 
So, so a business brand, as opposed to a personal brand, is about is built upon around an identity that you create, maybe as the CEO of the business or as the owner of the business for a business. Whereas personal branding is all about the person, is all about the leader. For example, if it's a, if it's a leader of a corporate, so a personal branding normally outlasts any business brands that you'll have. And having a personal brand is one of the best investments that you can make both now and uh, for the future because having a personal brand creates a lot of opportunity and it creates uh, freedom. And so for you now to begin to have a good personal brand, what you need to do is you need to have a personal branding strategy. And what is a personal branding strategy? I know it sounds like a very big, strategy sounds like a very big word, but it's just basically a simple plan that takes a, a simple plan that you take your reputation and even a, your career from a relatively from relative obscurity to very high uh, visibility. It is a plan that will be able to describe where where you stand now and also be able to tell you and also what also be able to maybe speak to you at what level of visibility would you want to achieve in the future. And so having this a strategy also helps you to identify or lay out in detail the tactics that you want to use to build your brand, the tools and even the skills that you need to attain your goal. Because when you're developing a personal brand, you need to have your goal. It also will include what kind of content would you would, would I want, would somebody want to put out daily? It will be like, it will be like kind of like a guide that will help you in your day-to-day -day journey as you build your personal brand, as you build your personal brand. And so Having a personal uh, branding strategy that is that that uh, is planned, is carefully planned, takes away that uncertainty out of your quest, so that you can be able to concentrate and focus to, and build a, a good a good brand. So it's very very important to have a good plan and a good personal branding uh, strategy. And so, having defined uh, defined what. Uh, a personal uh, branding is and just making a that slight distinction between a business plan, a business brand, and a personal brand. Let's just I just want us to see how we can we can figure out our right personal brand. We can figure out how to develop our own uh, personal brand. Uh, personal brand. It sometimes when you're developing a personal brand, you you may have a little bit of trial and error, but it's just good to embrace the journey so that uh, you. You, you, you know, you, you start somewhere because after all, a brand doesn't have to be, to be perfect. So let's just see how then do you go about developing that uh, personal brand. And so the first thing that you need to do is in developing your personal brand or if you already, if you already have a brand and you just want to rebrand yourself, the first thing that you, you, is important is finding yourself. I know when finding yourself may sound a bit cliche or or maybe it may sound like advice that you'd want to give someone on a spiritual journey rather than a, a professional role but it's very important to when it's very important to find yourself when you are uh, developing your brand because branding also requires a lot of self awareness and self awareness here I mean that you need to understand your thoughts uh, your emotions your values, your actions, so it's so that you develop your brand according to what you have set out, what, what you think is important for you. So that's why self-awareness is very critical and also having that uh, thoughtful positioning so that you position yourself in a way that you that is well thought out. And again, as you also find yourself, you also need to ask yourself questions like, uh, who am I? And, what perspectives uh, do I uh, do I have to offer? Because your vintage point is is unique, and so then you need to also consider what issues or what topics do I want to maybe project in my personal uh, brand? What kind of uh, work or what particular projects have I carried out at my you know in my career or in my work that I'd want to you know to project? So that and also sometimes it's very important. Uh, when you are finding yourself to take time and write down some of these things, 
the, some of the things that you can bring to the to the table because everything that to write to you know to brainstorm and write down things that you can bring to the table and everything that informs your point of view and so when you are finding yourself when you are uh, thinking through the perspectives that you may offer you can consider things like maybe the industry that you are in you may consider your goals or why do you want to develop your brand you may also consider your your upbringing your affiliations and memberships you want to also consider your personal weaknesses and your personal strengths. You want to, you just want to be able to capitalize on everything that makes that makes you an interest an, an interesting person. So that is why it's very important. The first thing is to find yourself. And then second thing is focus yourself. Why? Because your personal brand stems from your, your identity. Yeah, but but there's a lot more targeted uh, than that. But you need to you need to be focused because you can't be everything to everyone. So you need to, as you find yourself, focus yourself and 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 and, and so that you are not you are focusing on one particular aspect to a particular group. You need to be the one thing, be, be one thing to a to a very a carefully cultivated group or a fairly cultivated audience or community. So focus. And then the third thing when you're building your brand is your audience. Who are you talking to? Who is your audience? Who is your community? You need to identify your audience and you need to define your audience and ask yourself several questions. What does success look like in terms of your sphere of influence? What are the demographics of my audience? What are their interests? What are their insecurities? What are their pain points? What are some of the insights that my audience would, would like to know? So it's very important to understand and define your audience because these are the people to whom you are talking to. So you need to understand them. And then the fourth thing in creating your personal brand is your value. You need to find you need to find and establish and, under, and understand your unique value preposition. That is the fundamental reason that people should pay attention to you or should even listen to you. And this, uh, the golden cycle concept, this is a concept that has been imagined for, uh, for companies, but it is also, it, it just works very well for people who are looking to um, refine their persona or to their brand. And it has, uh, it focuses on three things. Uh, the, the, the papa, the why, and that is uh, the purpose. Uh, what is your, in, what do you, do you want, to, why do you want to do what you do? Yeah, and what is your cause? What is your belief? That is the why. And then the how, the focus is on the how. Uh, how do you fulfill your why and provide for it? And here, if this is a process. You want to identify specific actions that you take to realize the why. And then again, the third focus is the what. What do you offer your audience or your community? And what do you do? What are the results? And also here you want to show proof. So you can use this uh, golden circle to, to help you focus and communicate all that you can bring uh, to, to the table, to, to the table. And then number four, number five is tagline. And a tagline generally is not absolutely necessary, but it is it is a good asset uh, to have why because it it makes it easy for people to remember to remember uh, there's also a better chance it will come to mind when they, when when an audience or somebody or people need to precisely need precisely what you offer so if you have the tagline it's a good reminder and uh, uh, but you don't really necessarily need a, a, a tagline and then the other thing that you need to do when you're creating, to have, when you're creating a personal brand is style, your style. So then you need to decide how are you going to present yourself to your target audience, to your public, to your community. You want to develop a style that complements your perspectives as I had alluded to earlier, or a style that highlights the, your value, the value that you're bringing to the table. 
And then the next thing is your personality. Why is personality important? It's important because a coherent brand requires a strong, consistent uh, uh, personality. And so when you are describing us, you need to pick the right words to define your brand personality. And that when you pick the right words, you'd find that your look and your voice naturally uh, evolve from, from, from there. So maybe some examples of the uh, of, of words that you can, you know, words that you can use it when you are developing a personality. It's good maybe to have like three words that you can use to describe your personality. For example, if you are um, a travel blogger, for example, you can describe yourself as you are a, as a traveler who is impulsive, fearless, and self-sufficient. For example, or if you are a, a business an entrepreneur, your personality can be. Can be challenging, you can be you can be challenging, intense, and also and straightforward. Very brief, three words just to describe your personality. And again, just to make your personality interesting, you can also use some uh, tension. For example, if you are an academic, you can say that uh, you are an academic who is intellectually intellectual, but at the same time grounded. So picking the right words to describe your personality is, is also very critical. And then number eight, your look, which is more or less the same, uh, uh, relates to your style that I had said pre uh, previously. Your look can include your, passion, your personal fashion choices, but it doesn't stop there. Your look also goes to your social media platform. For example, your website, your, your, your Facebook page, your, your Instagram, your welcome email, and here, the key thing here is consistency. Your, your look has to be consistent uh, throughout. And of course, again, your design, your colors, your, your, your logo, your colors and your logo, if you, if you have a, a website or a Facebook page are also critical. And again, the key word there is they have to be consistent and they have to communicate what it is your brand is projecting. And then number 10, your voice, and this is your brand voice. So if, even, if, if, even if you're only going to put a caption on your Instagram page, your voice, your brand voice is a crucial part uh, of, of, your, of your brand. So when you're, when you're determining your brand voice, you need to ask yourself, what do I want to say? How do I want to say it? What voice best matches the personality of my brand? And you and sometimes you can have you when you're thinking of coming up with a brand voice, you can uh, you can you can use uh, dimensions of the like funny. You want to, you either want to have a funny voice or a serious voice, or you want a formal voice or a casual voice, or even you want an enthusiastic or a, or a matter of fact voice. So you need to identify the kind of brand voice that you want. And then number 11, as you go, as you, another one, number 11, as the, an, an aspect of creating a, your personal brand is you need to stay true to yourself. Be just you. Because personal branding is not about, it's not about, it's not a form of deception. Personal branding, as I mentioned earlier, is your image. It is your story. It is your life. So you must be genuine and authentic about it. You, you must be true. Whatever, whatever it is, it has to be the truth. So because consistency, consistency, personal branding is key. And the more authentic your brand is, the easier you'll find it. it stays true to you, not only to you, but also to both to yourself and also to your brand. So you need to stay true to yourself. You need to be authentic. You need to, you need to be genuine about uh, your brand. That's why you need to really understand yourself. You need, to, as I mentioned uh, earlier. So having mentioned those uh, few uh, insights that you need to, to take on board for you to develop your personal brand. Now it's time, you know, you, you've understood, you have your voice, you have your target audience, you have your look, you have uh, you, you 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 are focused. You know what you want. You have you understand your value proposition. Now you you want to build that personal brand 
for 2023 and beyond. So it's so you want to create your, your, your brand. So you want to create a brand, you want to you, you you want to grow your audience and you want to establish a brand that is dependable. What do you now do? The first thing that you need to do is uh, this is repetitive and you need to. So you, you, in addition to analyzing your voice and getting the design and everything that you want, you want, you need to be consistent and repetitive. You want to repeat your successes. You want to highlight your achievements. And you want to do that in a consistent way on the various platforms that you choose. So you need to, you want to continuously talk about yourself. And if a certain form of content performs well, for example, if you're talking yourself, you're talking about your successes and your, your achievements in, for example, in LinkedIn, and you see that it's performing well, then you can use that kind of content as a blueprint for another social media uh, platform. So be repetitive, highlight your successes, highlight your achievements, but you do it in a more um, consistent manner. And then number two, you need to pick the right platform. You need to ask yourself where you want to promote your brand. How are you going to connect with your people? with your people or with your community or with your audience and where are they in the social media platform where can i find them so you you need to identify to pick the right platform and then uh, promote yourself in that right platform and then connect find out where they are and connect with them so pick the right platform and then number three you need to also social media social media now is uh, social media is at the heart of most personal branding and if you already have a private uh, account, you probably have a private social media account for your brand. But now if, if you want to build your brand, you need to go public and now start uh, curating your own, uh, your own content. So you need to pick a couple of, uh, of the most popular social media platforms. And again, start building up your following, building up your following, but now in a more strategic manner because you are uh, building a brand. So you want to pick the right venues according to your industry that you are in, according to the demographics of your audience, because you have already analyzed your audience. So you don't want to just to uh, send your content to people who are not there. So you want to do that, pick the right social media, pick the most popular social media platform, get a following, and then also pick the right venues according to your industry and the dem demographics of your of your audience. And then number four, you can also use uh, email marketing tools to help you to, now you want to connect with your audience and you can use email marketing tools to help you develop a list of uh, your target audience. And then you send, you send you, you communicate with them by giving uh, reg regular updates on your achievements and or even developing uh, flyers or, or uh, a newsletter. And then uh, number five, the website. So no matter what else you do, you do creating a personal website adds a lot of value to your brand. Uh, having a website gives you uh, that on, an online home and a, a portfolio where you can display your, your best works. You can also use that website to link social media, social, uh, media accounts. You can use that website to you know, share blogs, you know, so that you can it can also help you to become a thought leader in in you know in your industry and also develop a, a mailing list. And then number six, you need to stick to a schedule. And uh, this is where so, social media play, uh, social media tools really pay off because if you have a schedule and if you are consistent. And you're repetitive. You're, rep you're, rep you're you keep on repeating, and you know you're consistent. You're consistent in updating. Then you are. You always. It helps you uh, keep your audience uh, engaged because you're all. You're all. Your audience is engaged because you have a schedule, and you're always. You know, posting strategically, and there's no. There are no lapses. There's no gap. So you need to use tools to integrate. So when you you can also use tools to integrate your social media accounts. You can design, you can design ads, and you can also, because you already have planned content is scheduled, you can you have planned content that is scheduled and you keep on 
posting and you keep on engaging your 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 audience so even better you can again if you have a schedule you can monitor and respond to conversations that you're also or interested in from one uh, central central place that is your your website and then number seven it's very uh, engage industry peers and have uh, conversations you know social media is a very is, is social and uh, so you also need to reach out to other people who, you know at similar places or who have similar careers and you know engage with them follow follow non people follow non successes track down hash, uh, uh, hashtags uh, trending for followers, engage with them, share their content, just find a way of continuously engaging with industry peers and join in those conversations and also lead conversations. And then number eight, take advantage of any other uh, branding opportunities uh, that, uh, that you, may, you may come across. Uh, maybe you can develop business cards, you can have branded uh, email signature, any branding opportunity that you, you come across, it's good for you to, to take advantage of that. And then so having uh, said that, now we have an idea of what personal branding is, we have some tips on how you can, how you can uh, develop your brand and now what you can do to develop your, bra your brand going beyond. So it's just also important to and just summarize and understand what things make up a personal brand. What are those things that, maybe three or four things that you can pick to make, that make up a good personal brand. And I, I have just identified four. One, because effective personal brands offer one, you specific knowledge of an industry or a topic. Then an effective personal brand offers a unique point of view. You're always giving a unique point of view in matters in your industry or a topic that you've chosen. And then again, an effective personal brand offers that authentic personality. And number four, a consistent content creation schedule where there are, there are no gaps. You are always interacting. You're always engaging with your audiences. So, I have so let's. I just want to share with you some uh, personal brands here that have some of these uh, core qualities. You may know some of them. You may have had some of them, or probably you you'll be hearing some of them for the first time. But if you Google them, you will just see, especially if you're in that industry. So this is Masi Mahinda. She's a a young thirty one year old who is an engineer. And also remember, we said that personal branding is what people also say about you. So People say about Masi, they say that uh, she's, she's, she's an introvert, uh, but uh, she, most engineers are known to be introverts, but for Masi, it is the complete uh, reverse. As you can see from her look, she walks into a room and suddenly her contagious smile and laughter rubs off everyone. Uh, she, was, she, she had doubled up in acting and modeling, but engineering is where she found her niche as a mechanical engineer. And she's the only mechanical engineer in her department uh, at Safaricom. And in 2018, and she's really made her a, a name in this uh, data cloud Europe. So it, in data center, in the data center, in the, task the in designing, in the design for data center cooling, uh, data center cooling uh, that, um, in that field. So in 2018, she was named the data cloud uh, European Engineer of the Year, a recognition for her efficient, for ensuring uh, ensuring energy efficiency across the board. So that is also she's developed a very good brand in this in this sphere. And then we also have uh, Dr. Victor uh, Mungera. And uh, what do they say about him? They say that some men walk into a room and make it larger than it is. Some men walk in and the room shrinks. But for Dr. Mwengera, is neither. He is the room. That's how people, that's how he's perceived. He is the room. And, it's just, he, and, and he just might as well because he has always had uh, big shoes to fill. And of, uh, he was a former employee of Rolls Royce and uh, Augusta Hel Helicopters. And he's guiding and shaping Kenya, Kenya's next Euro, 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 um, aerospace leaders at a very young age of 35. So he's also a brand in that space. 
We also have uh, Dr. Nancy Mwagangi. I'm sure you, you all know her. She was the former uh, uh, Chief Admis uh, Administrative Secretary at the Ministry of Health. And she's, she's, no, she's synonymous with, uh, with, uh, with uh, working around the clock to contain COVID-19 pandemic uh, in, in Kenya in, you know, in, during the you know, COVID pandemic in Kenya. And you know, she's a medical doctor, but now this, she developed her brand by the way she was working around the clock to contain COVID. And then you know, also I have examples of people who have grown their brands to gain a community, to, 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 to form a community and gain followers. And this is Carolyn Toko, all of you know her. And she she has over 1.3 followers in uh, on on Facebook, and she's also uh, one of the most domin do dominant attributes of her is uh, is her wisdom when it comes to matter related to brand growth, personal development, and women empowerment and business success. So she's really built a large community and gained a lot of uh, a lot of uh, followers, being an influencer in that marketing space. And then finally, there's this, uh, this is Christine. She's the CEO of Super Mamas, an event and marketing company that provides a very ex exclusive, exclusive platform for, Ken for Kenyan moms uh, to share, connect, and get information through her website. And she also has over 77,000 uh, followers. Those are just few Kenyans that I, I, picked, I, I, I picked just to share uh, with you as a case study. And so those are examples. And so when it comes to, so you've developed now your brand, you also you have to keep on also auditing your, auditing your brand. So while you don't want to continuously and impassively changing your brand, there is really nothing wrong with intentional goal-driven branding, rebranding. So after you've created your and built a successful brand, you also want to take stock every now and then like maybe every year or so to reflect on where you are and what you hope to accomplish. And if not, uh, why not? Did you, did you accomplish what you set out to accomplish? Did you accomplish your goals? If you didn't, why not? What is missing? What can you better? What can you do better? And so you can also ask people who are familiar with your work to help you audit your brand and then uh, see how you can improve it you know going going forward so it's also it's also good to to take stock and audit your personal brand and so what is the way forward having shared with you those those a few nuggets i think you can get started with your personal branding now and it doesn't have to be complicated building it doesn't have to be complicated it doesn't have to be intimidating because already you're already doing it subconsciously. Remember, I said that even just dressing up and going to work, that is already you are, you are a brand in itself. So you just need to make it more intentional. So then you need to first and foremost figure out whom do you want to influence and the effect you want to have. And then, secondly, craft a consistent style. That uses that design to elements that uses design elements to build a recognition a recognizable brand, and then number three, choose a limited number of platforms. You could even start with one, even like LinkedIn, and start producing um, branded content. And I just want to conclude with this uh, uh, quote as, uh, from Shakespeare. Shakespeare, as Shakespeare would say, "This above all." to thine own self be true. So in fact, start first by being true to yourself right now, this minute. Then grab a piece of paper and start listing everything that gives, that goes into that, that, that delightful goal that is you and give yourself some time and give yourself some time and, uh, oops and go and build your brand, but not a brand. Thank you very much. I wish to stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, uh, for that presentation. Uh, very, very uh, insightful input uh, in terms of 
personal branding, uh, what we need to do. Uh, members, uh, at this point, we are moving into uh, the question and answer session. Uh, kindly feel free uh, to type your uh, the questions into the chat box so that we can have uh, our guest speaker, Ms. Anton Antoinette uh, Kamau, giving us uh, expert opinion on how to improve our personal brands. Any questions coming in from, from, from members? As we await the questions, uh, I think maybe mine will just be, uh, the, I'll, I'll, I'll give the first question. Uh, there was a trending, uh, there was a trending uh, boxer in Kenya, I think uh, last week, uh, it's called Mandonga. And uh, I think uh, there's a lot of input in terms of uh, personal branding from, from his, uh, from how he, he handled he handled himself uh, and also uh, the fights that he had. There was a lot, a lot of public interest. What do you recommend in terms of uh, having uh, your personal brand being looking like it's too uh, too aggressive or too? Uh, would you recommend someone having a personal brand that uh, really stands out as being too aggressive or really too pushy? Uh, the, I think that, that that would be the, uh, the the clarification or input that uh, maybe you can you can give us, or if you are aware of uh, that particular uh, uh, boxer by the name Mandonga. Thank you, Brian. First of all, I, I've, I've never even heard of that boxer. Maybe I, I'm not really a sporty person, but remember what I said: when you're developing a brand, first of all, what is your objective or what is your goal? And then also, secondly, what personality, what is your brand personality? What kind of personality do you want to have? Do you want, do you want to stand out? Do you want to look at, you need to define what personality do you have and what voice do you want? You see, what do you want to tell people and how do you want to tell them? So it just depends on your, the, the, on your goal and the personality that you want to develop as a brand. That is that is well that is well uh, yeah, noted. Yeah, yeah. What that is, is well. Yeah, yeah. That and is well even, noted. Yeah. What is your brand mission and what is your brand message? What message do you want your brand to? So it, it just it's it's just up to you. You need to define yourself. Well, that is okay. On to the, the the questions that are coming into the chat box. I think I will fill them to you. Uh, in the in the case of being a, a brand name in the nation, then by chance you get associated with graft. Uh, this takes long to clear from the public. How do you go about it when, please, when you name? How do you go about it? Again. Uh, in the case of being a, 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 a brand name in the nation, then by chance mm -hmm. you get associated with graft. So your reputation is damaged as a result of association with, uh, with corruption. How do you go about it to redeem your image in... Uh, how do you go about it to, to redeem your, your image? Yes, you remember in just my last slide, I talked about uh, uh, um, auditing yourself. Yeah, so you need, you, you, you can always rebrand yourself, set new targets, get a different personality and uh, start again. You know, that is like a crisis. When a crisis happens, you also need to weather the storm and rebrand yourself. So I suggest that you, you, you rebrand yourself, define your goal and start again, start developing a different persona. It, it will take time, but you, you can't just be down. You need again to get up and redefine yourself and re redefine your brand. It's a matter of redefining yourself, doing a brand audit, asking yourself where we went wrong, what could I have done better and begin to rebuild yourself. And, and get out good content about yourself. That is well noted. Uh, another another question uh, or tips tips on how to maintain uh, uh, emotional intelligence uh, so that it does not tarnish one's brand. How, how, how what tips would you would you give in terms of uh, 
management of one's uh, emotional intelligence so that it does not tarnish one's brand. Okay. Um, so one thing is that you also need, uh, I'm just trying to connect emotional intelligence and brand. Maybe if, you, if the person can, can, uh, can clarify, because also you can also keep monitoring your brand. What are people saying? in your brand, what are you giving out and what are you saying? And also the, the fact being self-aware, you are aware, you need to be aware of your emotions. You need to be aware of your actions. And then maybe that way can help, that way, that with, with that self-awareness, you can be able to monitor your brand. I didn't, I didn't quite get that question. Is it okay. emotional intelligence or is it the brand? I didn't quite get, I didn't quite understand the question. I think I think maybe in terms of management of uh, one's temperament or uh, one's persona uh, to, to so that it does not uh, tarnish one's brand. Maybe yeah, and uh, that so means that you need to be yeah. self-aware of yourself. Yeah. You need to understand what messages do you want to send out to your brand. What is the what is your brand mission? Why do you want to build your personal brand? Then, what are you uh, to the table? Yeah. Another set of questions. I think members kindly keep the questions coming in. Uh, I'm seeing so many questions streaming in. Uh, on to the next one. Uh, uh, question one, uh, balancing modernity with formality and discipline or code of behavior. Uh, uh, just it's loading. Uh, I think I'll skip that for, for now, uh, and then I'll get back to it. Uh, the next question is between personal branding and building a good network of individuals to depend on, to push, to push you through, what matters most? Pardon? What matters most uh, between personal branding and building a network of individuals to depend on, to push you through, uh, if you get into uh, difficult times? What matters most in personal, in personal between, branding? What matters most between uh, having a strong personal brand and building a good network of individuals? So which one would you recommend? Building a good network of individuals or having a strong uh, personal brand? I think having a strong personal brand because a strong personal brand, I talk about it, it just, it gives you presence. It gives you presence in, in whatever platform you are. So it's better for, to focus on building that strong personal brand. Then automatically, then the networks will just come because if you have a strong presence and if it's a good brand, then that net, people want to be associated with that good brand. So focus on building your brand by being consistent, by sending out the right messages, by identifying your audience and being able to meet their needs because the audiences are hungry for information they're hungry for insight so once you define your audience then you're able to meet them as a brand okay thank thank you for that response then uh, what tips would you give introverts uh, uh, on on uh, or what strategies would you give introverts uh, to build their personal brands uh i would an introvert, so it depends on uh, what activities uh, are you pushing out. Uh, or for example, if you, are, if you are an introvert, you don't like to speak, you don't like to go on YouTube, for example. So is YouTube part of uh, an activity that you want to push in the brand or is speaking publicly one of those activities? So you need to define what activities that are not necessarily public activities that can help to push your brand. You can help to push your brand forward. Or, or you can also have uh, somebody helping you with your content. They can be able to develop, help you to develop content that is in line with your personality. Because if you're an interpreter, you don't like to speak or you don't like to have a YouTube, you know, to, to, to communicate using YouTube, then it will be a problem. So get somebody to help you to develop content that is aligned with your personality. So that even if you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to be seen, you can be heard. But the content has to be good. It has to be interactive. It has to be strategic. So get somebody to help you develop content that is good and that aligns with your personality. I think another another question that has come in: uh, How can one keep improving their personal brand uh, to be ahead of the competition? Remember, I talked about 
consistency, scheduling, uh, stick to a schedule, have a content calendar, and constantly engage your, your audience, follow people who are in the same line as you, start conversation, just constantly engaging your, uh, engaging your audience. I think that's that's one way of improving, and also again, also taking stock. What are you doing well? What are where are the gaps? How can I improve? But consistency is key. That is noted, and, and having good members, content. Yeah, and hope members, you're also taking note of those good responses, and the questions keep coming in. On to the next one: uh, How do you uh, differentiate between? Uh, your business brand and your personal brand uh, and uh, and then how do you manage uh, both of the brands at the same time uh, the business brand and your personal brand you remember i think in my third slide my third slide if you are if you're there i made a very slight distinction between a business brand and a and uh, personal brands. So a business brand is built around an identity that you create to your business and is independent. Whereas a personal brand is built around your personality, you as me, you as Antoinette or you as Brian. And so they are not the same. In business, is you're building an identity around uh, you're building you're building an, an identity that you create that that you create for your business. But personal branding is your 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 project you are building it's you build around your personality and your name and those two are, are kind of different. But sometimes you can see there's a very thin line because sometimes you can see like for example, um, Safaricom like Safaricom Michael Joseph is you see there's a very thin line between Michael Joseph how, how can you differentiate Michael Joseph and Safaricom? But Michael Joseph is his own brand in Safaricom. Is his own brand, so there is a very thin line between between those two. But it's but in a business, a business brand is built around an identity that you create for your business. Okay. That's what I can see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on to the next question: How do you, uh, or what would you recommend uh, in terms of protecting your brand uh, from plagiarism or mis misrepresentation? Uh, I think just make just constantly uh, auditing and uh, monitoring and reviewing and checking uh, your, your brand and also trying to like uh, having branded content and uh, ensuring that just having somebody to check that somebody is not using using your your content. I'm I'm not very clear uh, on that, but just being careful in what you're you're pushing out there. Okay, uh, the last question, uh, from, and thank you very much members, uh, is how can one tell uh, that their personal brand is improving over the years? Or what, how, what, what is the measure? One, for example, like if on social media, you want to see uh, how, how many followers do you have? Are you growing? Are people interacting with you? What kind of reviews you have? Like now I've shown you, Karen Toko has like 1 million, as we speak, one million followers. That shows that her brand is growing. So it's your reach. How many? How many followers do you have? Uh, how many? What kind of reviews do you get? What are other people saying about you? Who is coming to your your page? Who is engaging with you? What are, do they want? Are, are you even getting business out of your brand? That is how you measure by your reach. How many people are following you? How many people are engaging you? What kind of reviews are you getting? That is one way of you know seeing that your brand is your brand is growing. And then uh, the last question. Uh, then we, we can go to the uh, the closing remarks by the ED. Uh, what would you recommend, uh, or what order of priority would you recommend in terms of uh, uh, building a personal brand? Uh, so should someone work on their personal brand first and then later work on their business brand? Or what would be the order of of building those the, the brands? I think I I mentioned earlier on in my slide that your personal branding outlasts your your business your business uh, your business 
brand. So because your personal brand is your whole persona. So if my brand is good, if I build my brand, if my brand is if my, my brand is strong, if my brand has presence, then what happens to my business? Automatically, my business grows because of my personal brand. So focus on going on building your personal brand, and then business will follow. That is well noted. Uh, personal brand first, then uh, business brand uh, will uh, grow as as uh, as an as as a net effect of uh, the growth from the personal brand. Uh, thank you very much, members. I will uh, at this point now hand over the program to Dr. Maurice Indegwa, EDN CEO at Kim, uh, to give us the closing remarks. Uh, once again, thank you very much, Brian, and uh, thank you so, so very much, Mrs. Antonich, uh, for that uh, discourse that you've given us on the topic of today. As uh, we come to the close of the webinar, we want to greatly appreciate all those who logged in for this uh, seminar this, uh, this afternoon, and especially we want to, re to appreciate the first time, as I think, going through the scroll, we've seen there are a number of uh, people who logged in for the very first time. Welcome on board, and we appreciate that you came on board. Please remember that we always have these webinars every alternate Thursday, starting from three o'clock right up to five o'clock. We also want to appreciate those who have been with us since we started this a series of webinars way back in the year 2020. And also those who logged in early at the initial stage, because we always start three on the dot. We saw there are a number of people that, that had logged in early, and uh, to all of you, we want to say thank you very much. We also want to appreciate those who raise questions, because again, also, if a presenter makes a presentation and there are no questions, certainly then there is an issue. So those who raise questions, and there are many, some had sent early, others uh, typed them on the, on the chat, and others raised them on the floor. We want to say thank you very much. And to Brian and your team, I know there's a lot to go through, certainly sourcing for speakers, taking them through the dry run, and we want to greatly appreciate you, Brian, and your team. And to the speaker, what do we say? Just sampling through some of the comments, I've seen some saying that um, the session was enlightening. Others are saying it was an insightful session. So Mrs. Kamau, we want to say thank you very much. You've done a very good job in terms of giving that discourse on the topic of today. And so I want to say thank you very, very much to you. Uh, certainly you have uh, done justice to the topic. And there's every likelihood, therefore, we may call you again. And if we don't come knocking on your door to come and give us another discourse on another topic related or otherwise, please uh, do not let us down because you've done a good job and we greatly do appreciate. Finally, to all of you, we want to say thank you very much once again. A, for logging in on time. B, for being with us throughout this session. And we want to wish every one of you a very happy, prosperous, and blessed New Year 2023. We look forward to hosting you again. And as I said, we do these webinars every alternate Thursday. If there's any particular topic that you'd want us to cover this year, please feel free, send us an email or send us um, a WhatsApp message or reach out to any one of us and propose the topic and we'll be able to get a good discourse or person to come and give a good discourse on the particular topic. Well, having said that, I want to wish you a very, very blessed and happy new year. And uh, thank you once again, and have a blessed evening. Bye-bye for now.